Hello and welcome back to another episode of You Want to Do What. Today we've got Ellie on and she is a brand manager. Hi Ellie. Hello. How are we? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, really good, thank you. Um, Ellie, do you want to jump straight in and tell everyone a bit about what you do? Yeah, so I work in personal branding. So it's essentially branding, but for people rather than businesses. So it's kind of about working out what you want to be known for and then how you kind of communicate that to your audience. Okay, so working in the social media space, how did you sort of get into that and why did you decide to get into that? Um, I kind of fell into it, really. Um, I've always been quite active on social media. I think it's kind of natural for our age group now. It's a big part of life. Yeah. Um, And I was traveling before lockdown and then um, came back into lockdown and just needed a job. So I got a job in a call (laughs) center and then off the back of that managed to get uh, a secondment to go and work in the digital team. So I was doing a bit of e-commerce and a bit of social media marketing and then kind of realized, okay, it's the social media side that I really like, and then applied for a job in personal branding, kind of just, yeah, fell into it all really, but always wanted to work in, well, always enjoyed social media, and always wanted to communicate with people, and I think I've just kind of found a way to do that. So personal branding, I assume you're probably not, what are your clients? Because that that seems kind of odd, surely if you're already on social media, you probably don't need someone to do it, because you're you're already an influencer so or are you helping celebrities who are trying to make their social media more attractive what, what, who are your clients um so a lot of the clients that i work with at the moment are kind of ceos and founders of companies so it's kind of about building their personal presence to build like to give more clout to the the business i guess and getting them known in the space and known as a thought leader rather than just this kind of like invisible person hidden behind the business so it's interesting how do you sort of go about actually trying to do that for these people um i think the main thing is like working out what you want to be known for so if people think of you what what do you want them to think so if people think of ellie middleton what what is the first thing that comes to their mind or if someone was going to invite ellie middleton to do a talk or be on a podcast what would they be asking you about so I think like narrowing it down to those things that you really want to be known for not just your job title but kind of your personality as well so what do you value you know do you want to be known as being friendly and approachable or do you want to be known as being kind of corporate and professional Um, and then once you've kind of narrowed it down to what you want to be known for just consistently showing up as that so making sure you're providing value you're producing content you're showing up in the space and just making a name for yourself really this is a relatively new space really isn't it on on social media you know personal branding as such Um, and what kind of skill sets do people need to develop to go and work in personal branding Uh, I think a lot of it is about communication. So the copyright inside and being able to get that message from the person and portray it to the audience. I think that can be quite tricky sometimes that you've got to kind of become the person that you're, you know, you want it to still come across as them and you're helping them amplify their voice rather than giving them a new one. So I think kind of communication skills have got to be strong and creativity I think um kind of thinking of different content ideas that are going to get them out there and you know putting it together in a way that people are going to engage with rather than just the same content that people are seeing over and over again Mm. um I think they're the main things creativity and communication so we always talk about on the podcast uh, about university versus going straight into work. Now, what's your take on uh, university for going into jobs like social media? Do you think it would be worth going and study marketing or do you think jumping in and actually just getting started is a really helpful place to begin? I I would say jumping in and getting started. So I never went to uni. Um, I had offers to go to uni, um, but in my last year of sixth form, I was really unwell so I didn't end up sitting my exams um but for me I think especially with marketing it's not yes the theory is helpful but it's not the be all and end all it is about coming up with new ideas and you know being kind of hot off the press rather than 
the theories and kind of stuff that you'd learn about I say I think having a degree would is definitely beneficial for getting your first job I don't think it should necessarily be but I think that is still the case but in terms of the skills and actually being good at the job I don't think that's something that can be taught from a textbook I think it's more of a skill that you learn once you're in it once you're doing the job Uh, and what do you think about um, applying like our generation applying for jobs now we talk about this a lot about you know if you go into the whole route of putting your cv in it, it's quite you know you might not get feedback and you're just competing against a load of other cvs whereas we like to talk about maybe building some sort of portfolio whether it be on social media or showcasing the skills you have what do you think about that and how have you gone about getting the jobs you've got yeah so 100 percent agree that it's all about getting yourself out there um, so LinkedIn is all relatively new to me, but um, I did a post and it went a bit viral. Yeah, <laughs> off I the saw back that. Of that. <laughs> um, but yeah, off the back of that, I've had so much interest, people reaching out to me, people asking about what I do, people asking about if I'd be interested in working with them. And that's all just from being present on LinkedIn. Um, I, I think going forward now, once you kind of build a name for yourself and that's kind of the reason for having a personal brand I guess um is that you you shouldn't have to be slogging away applying and you know if you build up that brand for yourself and people are going to think of you and think you know I I want her to work with us rather than she's got to prove why she can work with us Mm. um but yeah I think definitely help what helped me to get this job was um, I applied, but it was kind of a very relaxed applying process. It was kind of a couple of questions rather than I didn't send in a, a kind of formal CV. It was just kind of skills based questions. Um, but I have a food blog on Instagram. And um, so they'd seen that and they saw that, you know, I've built up a bit of a social media presence for myself. So it's going to be easier for me to do that for clients, too. So I think definitely having kind of a passion project as cringe as that term is but <laughs> something that showcases that you're good at what you want to do and that, that doesn't have to be like uh, old-fashioned work experience but you know if you want to be a blogger start a blog if you want to work in video marketing start uploading some content to social media just show that you can do the job that you're applying to do yeah you obviously working with clients um up in the uh, CEOs and etc. I assume LinkedIn is probably your main platform, but how do you navigate LinkedIn as opposed to Instagram and Facebook and any other social medias? I think that is why my stuff has gone down so well recently on LinkedIn. Um, so I'm kind of naturally an Instagram person. That's where I spend, well, spent most of my my time and that's where I was kind of most present. Um, And then as part of my job in personal branding, it was like, okay, we're building these personal brands for other people. I need to build a personal brand for myself on LinkedIn so that they can, you know, they can see that I'm doing what I'm going to, what I'm telling them I can do for them. Um, So I only joined LinkedIn maybe six weeks ago um, and it's just kind of exploded. I think I joined the platform very aware that it was full of professionals and full of people that knew a lot more technical knowledge than I did. Um, And I think I just kind of showed up as my Instagram self. I think Mm. I just tried to, you know, be myself, bring value in other ways rather than, you know, people might know a lot more than I do. They might have a lot more experience than I do, but they don't see things in the same way that I do. So I think I tried to bring that and tried to show up on LinkedIn as a more authentic Instagram self rather than who I thought I should be on LinkedIn. Yeah, definitely. Um, You know, going through and working in social media, do you think it's worth uh, maybe looking at certain social media websites to learn about how to use different platforms or reading books about it? Or do you think it's one of these careers where you just have to be a practitioner? practitioner and you just have to be on the sites use them and see what works for you yeah I think it's definitely a case of being hands-on um but I think you know there are a lot of great resources out there I think within the platforms themselves there's a lot of like communities that help one another you know a big one is Pretty Little Marketer that Sophie runs 
Um, you know, so it's a space where there's all the tips and tricks and there's courses and it can point you in the right direction. Um, but it's more hands-on learning than just reading about it in a book, I would say. But there's definitely resources out there that can point you in the right direction. But I think going out and actually doing it is what's going to make the difference. So I'm also really interested about your food blog. So how did you get into that? How did you start it? And, and how's it all going? Yeah, so I started it in February this year, just kind of bored in lockdown, wanting to lose a bit of weight. And I thought, right, if I document what I'm eating, then I've got a reason that I've got to eat healthy stuff and I can't just keep eating the same junk every <laughs> night. Um, so it started as that. Um, it's very much not that anymore. If anyone's seen it, it's, there's no health in sight. Um, but it started as, yeah, just somewhere to track the things that I was eating. And then as stuff started to reopen, as lockdown was eased, I kind of started taking pictures of when we were going out for food as well. Um, and that bit kind of took off more. So it kind of led to getting invited to different restaurants. Um, I'd say now probably once or twice a week, I get invited down to try out new menus or new restaurants or things like that. So yeah, it's amazing. It's like, how did, how did I fall into this life of yeah. free food? But yeah, it's really good fun. And I've met some, there's kind of a bit of a community of food bloggers. Um, so I've met some really lovely friends through it. And yeah, it's good. It's a hobby, but it's it takes up a lot of time. It's kind of a part-time job in itself. But yeah, I love it. So how would somebody go about starting something like this? Because it's quite there's a lot of blogs out there, isn't there? But how did you sort of differentiate yours and, and how have you grown yours? Um, so it is just an Instagram account. Um, so I think the main thing when growing an Instagram account is community. So making sure that you're interacting with other people in your space, you know, if it's a food blog, interact with the other foodies, comment on their stuff, message them, follow them, kind of immerse yourself, build connections with people rather than just thinking it, thinking of it as number of followers. Um, you know, trying to talk to your audience as if it's just a friend that you're talking to rather than you're presenting at work. Um, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of time trying to build a platform. I think Instagram, especially, I think TikTok now is the place to be if you're wanting to grow yeah. quickly. Uh, it's on my to-do list, but I've just not <laughs> got there yet. Um, but yeah, I think just community is key. It's a think of it as that you're building a community rather than that you're trying to get a following I think is the best way to look at it we've spoken to a few um we've spoken to influencers before and obviously your job is slightly different to that because um particularly I think in the LinkedIn world it's going to remain a consistent um social media or media platform but particularly with uh Facebook Instagram Snapchat TikTok those platforms can almost come and go and die overnight I mean Snapchat I believe was quite a big influencer platform and nobody really uses it the same way anymore do you see much uh or worry that that could affect your role in the in the industry um i think it's definitely something to consider because you know like you say you don't want to build up a career around one platform and then that suddenly disappears but i think with personal branding it's kind of like the package as a whole so it's not we don't just want to brand somebody on LinkedIn and went like it's not just LinkedIn account management it's this person's brand as a whole so that's going to kind of carry whether there's a new platform or whether it's through the press or whether it's you know through different social media platforms I think I think it would change it you know because you'd have to kind of start again with getting their name out onto that platform um but I don't think I don't think there's too much of a risk with personal branding as much as there is with kind of influencing and stuff like that. Mm. So I'm also really interested about you being an ADHD advocate. So do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah. So um, I've always really struggled with my mental health, um, kind of especially like 15 to 18. So that was kind of why I didn't end up sitting my A-levels kind of very prone to meltdown I think is the best way to put it mm. um but always just got told that I like it was generalized anxiety disorder and depression um but kind of kept going around in a cycle of 
being you know really high functioning really high performing not anxious like no low mood and then having a period of time where I was just in complete meltdown um and it kind of keep kept happening you know like over the course of a few years and I could feel it start to build up at the start of this year um and I was like it's not the anxiety that's the problem the anxiety is almost like a side effect of whatever else is going on that's kind of like when I reach burnout then I'm really anxious but I wouldn't say that I'm an anxious person um so I kind of pushed and pushed and pushed and managed to get to see a psychiatrist um and they kind of ruled out you know it's not bipolar it's not BPD it's not anything down that side but I think you should see someone for an assessment for ADHD and autism I was like oh okay like I've I've never heard of any of these you know I didn't know any of those things could have applied to me it wasn't really Mm -hmm. something I knew a lot about um anyway the the waiting list for an assessment on the NHS was a really long time so I decided to actually go private for my assessment for ADHD and got my diagnosis and so I think the reason I'm shouting about it so much is I didn't even know anything about it and I've got it um, and I think it's just the idea that we all have in our heads of ADHD is this like naughty schoolboy kicking and screaming and can't sit still. But that's just not the case at all. And I think so there's so many stories at the moment about, you know, women and girls being diagnosed so much later, like women in their 50s, not just ADHD, but I think neurodiversity in general, but like women in their 50s never been diagnosed and then they have a son and the son gets diagnosed and they're like, hang on a minute, I actually, that's me. And yeah. then they get a diagnosis off the back of that. So I think for me, raising my voice was like, if I'd have known about ADHD a lot, a long time ago, I would have kind of been able to press the doctors have been like, you know, I relate to this, I relate to this, I relate to this, and then got answers a bit sooner. So if I can shout about it and someone can read it and think, you know, actually that's me yeah. um, and get their diagnosis a bit earlier, then that's only going to help them. No, I think what you're doing is, is really cool. I don't think, you know, uh, maybe from our generation, we were just starting to, you know, have a few people get diagnosed with like ADHD and things, but I still think probably a lot of us, you know, there wasn't enough done and now we're actually sort of taking our mental health a bit more seriously yeah definitely I think um mental health especially like over neurodiversity but there has been a huge shift in like people talking about it which is amazing I think like I think I was like right on the the wrong time of that so when I was like most ill was probably like 15, 16, 17. And I had a horrendous time at school with it. You know, everyone thought I was using it for attention. You know, I was just an attention seeker. I was just using it to get out of things. Whereas now it is much more accepted that, you know, mental health is just as serious as physical health. And I think in a way, lockdown helped break down those barriers because it was so like blaringly obvious how much of a hard time people were having with their mental health. So Um, I mean, it wasn't a nice thing for anyone to go through, but it has kind of brought the conversation forward leaps and bounds. Uh, yeah, I, I 100% agree with that. I'm um, going back to personal branding. What would be your number one positive so far of working in the industry? Ooh, I think getting to connect with and understand people. I love talking to people and I love hearing the world from their point of view. Um, so I think that's my favorite part getting to pick other people's brains and what would be an average day for you um so an average day would be kind of conversations with clients or passed on from clients about the kind of sort of things that they're wanting to talk about about things that have happened in their week that they want to to shout about um, just ideas that they might have about things that they'd like to speak about and then kind of drafting those into posts um, kind of putting a bit of a spin on them and then maybe sending them over for approval everything gets signed off and then posting those out I guess just can kind of generally researching what's going on in the world so if we've got a client in I don't know sustainability they work in like a sustainable company and there's like COP26 going on at the moment it's like okay this is what's going on these are the facts how can we use that to amplify your message um so the kind of background research and content creation mostly so that's the average day I would say 
obviously most companies these days have their own social media presence do you have to work with uh the company social media um personnel um, sometimes there's a link there. Sometimes we'll just kind of see the content that they've put out and then adapt it. Um, but I think most of it does come directly from the person rather than the business, um, like the business's social media team. But in some cases, yeah, they'll forward on ideas that they've had or we'll, you know, connect with them so that everything's synced up and stuff like that. And what would be some less favorable aspects of this uh, career and industry? Ooh, um, I think sometimes for some clients, there'll be like management of their account. Um, so kind of checking on the engagement and replying to people's comments and stuff like that. And that can be quite tricky because you need to make sure that, you know, everything does go through the client and everything's what they agree with. And, you know, you're not just kind of being this false person on their behalf. Um, so it can be quite kind of backwards and forwards with that I would say um but now I, I do as a whole like out of everything that I've done personal branding is definitely my favorite I think there's a lot less of those mundane boring tasks and would you still go into this industry knowing everything you know now yeah definitely I feel like I'm still very early on in my journey um and I'm excited to see where it leads me I think definitely off the back of the the post exciting doors have opened and I've spoken to loads of very exciting people and yeah just excited to grow <laughs> well it's been an absolute pleasure hearing all about your story so far Ellie and um, thank you so much for taking the time to come on thank you for having me thank you Ellie um please feel free to plug all your social media uh, LinkedIn your food blog and everything oh okay so I'm Ellie Middleton on LinkedIn and I'm life with mids on Instagram if you like burgers that's the one for you <laughs> Ooh, awesome we'll be Thank on you. that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Thanks, Ellie.